the situation with the energy supply of Ukraine manages to be stabilized, despite the regular attempts of the Russian army to launch missile attacks on energy infrastructure facilities. For several days now, Ukrainerga has not been setting electricity limits for the regions, since there are practically no generation restrictions. All nine power units of nuclear power plants are in operation. Additional units are operating at some thermal power plants and hydroelectric power plants are working more actively. All this makes it possible to produce more electricity. And it's really amazing. Power engineers are doing titanic work so that you and I can be with minimal or no power outages. Serhii Kovalenko, CEO of Yasno Energy Generation Company, on Facebook. Due to damaged infrastructure, mining network restrictions are still in Odessa. Over the past 10 days, the DTEC Energy Company has eliminated more than 800 accidents in the Odessa region. The energy infrastructure in the Donetsk and Dnipropetrovsk regions also often suffers from constant hostilities. Over the past week, experts have resumed the supply of electricity to 41,000 families in the Donetsk region and 49,000 families in the Dnipropetrovsk region. In general terms, we can say that the situation is rather difficult in Odessa. The Kyiv region and some regions in the west of the country have a much worse situation than in other areas, due to the most recent shelling, but in general there are no critical situations in the regions. As a result of shelling by the Russian army in the Lviv region, almost all electrical substations were destroyed. This was stated by the mayor of Lviv, Andriy Sadovy. Each of these objects has its owner. These are state institutions. Some of these facilities are still in operation. Most, unfortunately, cannot be restored, so we will need to rebuild them. Andriy Sadovy, mayor of Lviv, in an interview with RBC Ukraine news agency. Since the autumn of last year, the energy infrastructure has been under massive missile attacks by Russian troops. The first serious shelling took place on October the 10th. Then 11 important infrastructure facilities in eight regions were damaged. Russia tried to leave Ukrainians without electricity and heating during the heating season, which could sow panic among the civilian population. In fact, what the Kremlin expected to achieve with those shelling, that is, a psychological pressure on the population, while everything was accompanied by information and psychological operations, especially in social networks. All that did not work. Of course, the energy infrastructure was damaged harshly, but this absolutely did not affect the mood of the Ukrainians. As a result of Russia's massive shelling of energy infrastructure facilities, about half of Ukrainerga substations and almost 20 thermal power units were damaged. If we add to this the occupation of part of our energy facilities by Russians, Ukraine has temporarily lost 44% of nuclear generation, 75% of thermal power plants and 33% of block thermal power plants. Every second Ukrainerga substation was attacked in four months. Denis Shmihal, Prime Minister of Ukraine, on Telegram. Russia does not abandon attempts to attack the Ukrainian energy infrastructure. The last massive shelling took place on February the 10th. As a result, several high-voltage infrastructure facilities in the eastern, western and southern regions of Ukraine were damaged. It was the 14th missile attack and the 16th drone attack. Reported by Dana Kolesnik, Yulia Bil, UATV News.